there we go again. It's time for game number two, TCN meeting, relax, and to be honest, I give Arise the award for the most anticlimactic ending ever in Dota. Like I really was expecting a super heavy defense fight, TCN turning around that bad fight they had, and yeah, but he got caught out in front of the base for some reason, didn't get screw off, and yeah, it just ended there. Him calling GG. What do you say? I really think the last fight overall, first of all, relaxed. They definitely did a really nice job of actually splitting up the fight. But TCN, in the last fight, they didn't go for any synergy between their ultimates. Like, the macro pyre was thrown out randomly, then a little bit later came out the chronosphere, then like 5 to 10 seconds after that came the reverse polarity once like half the team was dead already. And yet the ending, it was absolutely horrible. It's definitely yeah. not how I saw that game going down. But TCN now, they grab themselves the Batrider, arguably the best initiator in this game. So relax now. Center War Runner is possible. Maybe even Shadow Shaman. Yeah, I can get be. banned. So, by the way, I, I want to center. Uh I want to give some headers for for the people that are uh, joined here now. First of all, like we got a lot of um, a lot of Twitch followers, also people checking out our uh, Facebook and liking it. That helps us a lot, guys. Really, as I said, you can see a variety of games being uh, streamed here on Hafla TV in, as I said, two languages on four channels. For all the Romanians, we are gonna be uh, on the Comic Con in yeah. Pretty much in a week. You're gonna fly in seven days, Coucher. You're gonna fly from Estonia down to Romania. I'm gonna be driving by car to Bucharest and we're gonna meet up with the guys from XPC, from Balkan Bears, uh, Next Please, and of course uh, TCN here. I hope we have some nice drinks there in Bucharest. I hope they show us some nice locations. And of course, amazing games there on the finals. I hope the crowd is pretty much amazing. Um, yeah, that's what I'm actually hoping for. But. Um. Also the Romanian scene <laughs> is huge, man. Yeah, I know, I know. That's why I'm looking forward to the Romanian guys. They're awesome. Their spirit is awesome. And so far, everyone I met in the Romanian scene, absolutely nice guys. They they help each other. They help us. Like we are like partnered with a couple of teams there. And as soon as our website is up, like you're gonna see that too. You can check them out as well. So yeah, it's it's absolutely amazing. But some more headers like on HTV2, on Hefla TV2, there will be then the North American games uh, today that will be. I already forgot. <laughs> I forget it's what it uh, is. It's North American Rejects versus Revenge and yeah. Top 5 versus CMB. Exactly, yeah. This will be streamed on Hafla TV 2 and for all, if there are Germans here on this channel right now, you can check out later in 1 hour and 42 minutes, there will be Empire vs Cloud9, the JDL Season 1 final. I'm gonna stream it. Um, probably in a solo cast on Hafla TV 4 in German. Um, this will be pretty much. You're amazing. teaching me for some German, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but it's a final. We have to do it. Either way, let's hop into the draft and see what we got here. The first ban rotation already came out. Everything is pretty much standard. You already said it. Bat Rider is coming out, and TCN going right away for a core. The Luna is coming out. On the other side, we have the Center Warner, the Shadow Demon. That means we have to see TCN banning out or picking the Mirana. So my vote goes for ban on Mirana. It has to be. It has to happen. Well, it might come out. It's not a must. Mirana isn't that strong. Sure, it synergizes extremely well with the Shadow Demon. But Mirana, he more often than not, just doesn't fill the role that is required of her. Maybe as a support with the Shadow Demon might not be too bad. Carry Miranas can do a crap ton of damage, they just need like w at least one more big item than the usual carries like the Luna does. Yeah, I guess. And TCN, they pan out the Jakiro yeah. instead. Absolutely surprised. Now, the f there is the next button coming towards Relax and then, yep, the pick is also theirs. That means, yeah, if they want the Mirana, it's coming out right now and to be honest, I feel this is very dangerous. Disruption, Soul Catcher on top of it, the arrow in your face and nothing you can do there if it's correctly timed. Like, Center Warner would be there for follow up, that means we have a Hoofstorm additional stun and of course the double edge that's 400 damage um, if it's level 4 
and of course plus the soul catcher as you guys can see the scaling is 20 30 40 50 percent and yep yeah, i was right it is mirana that's like the logical consequence of this so tcn drafting question mark here i have to say like getting this mirana through I don't know, like, we cast so many games each and every day, and every time I see Shadow Demon Mirana, it's just not pleasant for the enemy. And letting this combination through, then you have to have some sort of plan, and I hope, Puck. yeah, I hope TCN is coming up with a good plan here. Yeah, Puck, I mean, excellent plan, face shift out of the arrow, easy, gank dodged. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as mid lane goes, it's really nice, because if Mirana by some chance he's gonna be rotating around if she's not farming the safe lane or maybe even the off lane then the puck is one of the best heroes actually to survive that in the mid lane but I think the most important thing is the Magna span out by relax it's just a respect pretty much a respect <laughs> Let's call it respect ban, even though I have to say that um, the Magnus, especially in the last fight that TCN lost, I was waiting there, like I was hovering with my karma all over the fight, tried to catch everything, and I was like, where's the RP, where's the RP, now they are like three next to each other, but RP wasn't coming, in the end, like Freezer died because the Chrono didn't take the Shadow Fiend in it, and yeah, he pretty much got two-shotted by the Shadow Fiend, and yeah, then the RP it couldn't save anything, even with Arise and his carry Magnus build. So I don't know. That's that's the problem about these wombo combos. If everything relies on each other, and it you don't chain it up properly, and you don't get it up in time or properly chained, then yeah, it's all falling apart because the heroes alone, as such, they were inferior to Relax's setup. In combination, of course, much stronger. But like yeah, you can't rely on every time hitting your wombo combo. And they just needed to catch Shadowfin with one of the ultimates, that might have been enough already, but didn't happen, but of course that's in the past now, and relax now, fourth pick about to come out, Mirana, Shadowfin, Centaur, so possibly they need a mid laner, as well as maybe a secondary support if they don't want to go for a jungler, if they do though, Enchantress, Chen, decent pickups, although with them having no other forms of push so far, I wouldn't bet on them going for a jungler either so yeah i guess no i, I don't Rubik think a jungler, maybe even like with with the presence of uh like shadow demon mirana santa warner like i don't think you want to have a jungler <laughs> you want to have yeah there is a morphling as a super scary core so is it mirana mid then or mirana support after all i don't know i mean the center war on offline the mirana, mirana shadow demon why not morphling mid <laughs> It could be Morphling mid as well. I think Mirana actually might do a little bit better maybe against the Puck. But I have seen Centaur played mid as well. Like a couple of times. It's possible I guess. Yeah it would be possible. Definitely possible. And but... I am hoping for Shadow Demon mid rushing Aghanims. <laughs> Shadow, yeah Shadow Demon Aghanims rush. So after 6.81 for all those who don't know. Like actually Demonic Purge is getting two charges. So it's it's quite sick because the spell I mean, as such already goes through BKB etc. So yeah, the purge is so good against the bat rider. Bat rider comes in, tries to so suddenly purged up, doesn't move anywhere. Yeah, well, I mean, usually you use the disrupt on either the bat rider or on the lasso target, but it, once you have a like, Ganem scepter, for example, you can even like yeah take the bat rider under focus with one demonic purge. Unless he has four stuff, he doesn't get far, and yep, yeah, he might as well die right there plus you have a second demonic purge for whatever carry is there for example with a bkb and i like the demonic purge just for the reason that like you can kite even bkb targets quite nicely and yeah simply for that reason i i like the changes on shadow demon and he was already like pushing his way into the the meta at 6.8 in the last two weeks, I, I don't know, I probably mentioned it every single draft so far, uh, that the Bane is going out and the Shadow Demon is coming in as a replacement for a Synergy couple with Mirana. But yeah, now with 6.81, he got even stronger. So uh, to be honest, there is no reason anymore to go for a Bane, in my opinion. Bane, of course, brings a lot of nice tools. And yeah, but if I compare it, Shadow Demon is just better. Of course, Fiend's Crypt... I mean, there's no doubt about it. Very strong ultimate, but now, I don't know. I trade a shadow, uh, a fiend scrub anytime for a shadow demon that does just so much more. Also, early game and can rescue so many heroes. 
Yeah, it's kind of a preference pick. There are a handful of teams that really just love the Bane. It, of course, does suit in some lineups better than others. And at the moment, for example, TCN, they have just so many stunts that could stop the Fiend script from happening. But Rubik is the pickup for TCN. I actually would have liked to see a Gyrocopter support just for the homing missile against Moonlight Shadows. <laughs> OP. Yep. Now that it doesn't disengage when you're invisible, like that would actually be quite sick. But well, well, it's it's definitely not a gyrocopter. I, yep, yeah, I highly doubt it. It's probably not. Even the shadow demon is decent against the sh gyro, just because it can disrupt the target who who gets homing missile. But yeah. the last ban is ancient apparition by relaxed. They're fully aware of the fact that TCN they do need one other support now. And actually TCN having the Luna, they could go for a jungler, but a Venomancer pan ban by TCN. Yep, okay. I mean the Venomancer, pff, why not? I mean, in combination with, I don't know, a setup arrow and a slow on top, you have the Soul Catcher, that's a lot of AoE damage as well. Like, I mean, Puck, Batrider, as well as Rubik, they all kind of suffer against the Poison Nova. Plus, of course, it would also mean quite some pushing potential for the Venomancer, uh, for Relax here with the Venomancer. I mean, it could have happened, Gen. I guess. But yeah, they decide to go for it, Chen. You were, in the end, right? Relax is deciding to bring a jungle element into their draft. So this is going to be still interesting. Is this Morphling mid? Center or offline? Morphling mid? <laughs> Yeah, it might be. Mirana, I mean, Shadow Demon, not... Shen, they're in a try. I mean, Chen rotating in, making it a try. Maybe with early pushes, early ganks. Let's see how this is going to be laned. It looks pretty interesting on Relax's side, but we might totally be wrong. Morphling might be even solo save. Santa Warner going in the mid. And, yeah, then a dual off or something. Yeah, they could run a dual mid as well, Shadow Demon, Mirana. Yeah, for why not? A, when just throw a curveball, but Abaddon pick up for TCN, it's really good, like extremely good against the Mirana. Even if somebody gets arrowed, if it's not the Abaddon himself, he will be able to have Photic Shield the arrow debuff away. Yep, definitely. So, yep, I like the Abaddon pick up just for the fact that uh, it removes so many debuffs you just don't want to have. And, yep, I mean, so far both drafts look solid. Then again, I give my thumbs up to Relax just because they got sent Shadow Demon Mirana in the first three picks Dorsh and TCN, let it happen. So, in my opinion, like early mid game, slight advantage for them. Definitely slight advantage for them. Because this combination is just sick. We saw it so many times work out. Now we have to see if TCN can actually make it happen to dodge those arrows, even though they're not dodgeable <laughs> because you're in a disruption. So, let's see how this works out. So there we swap in game. Oh, I have to somehow set my default HUD on what we get new. I have no idea how I do that though. Either way, we have to go for a fast team introduction again. Like on TCN side, we have Arise. He swaps from a Magnus to a Puck. He's gonna play mid Ciso. Like Train Protector is now uh, Abaddon. Freezer playing the Luna. Lion is or Leon uh, is on the Batrider, and the stand in here quicks is on the Rubik. And for Relax, Crazy will be playing the Mirana, Windex up on the Chen, leaving Dread to play the Shadow Demon, Shalo will most likely be heading towards the offlane on the Centaur, and mid lane will once again be played by Yoki, this time on what looks like will be the Morphling. Yep, that will be the Morphling unless they swap around, but no, it should be like this. But now, Chen disconnects and they ask for what? Two minutes. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, but on ban cause bugged or something. I know. Yeah, I think that was a temporary uh, ban on Abaddon because um, the uh, say it the uh, the gimmick when he activated his shield himself, it already worked like a Ganem's. There was a um, a development post by Valve somewhere, and yeah, so it you already had a Ganem's scepter effect on him even without having a Ghanim Scepter. And for that reason, some leaks said, like, guys, like, until they fixed it, you don't pick Abaddon. But, yeah, I think it's supposedly fixed. Let's let's see about it. Fact is, they picked Abaddon, the admin didn't didn't say anything, so, yeah, for simply that reason, I don't think there's any trouble with that. I just hope it's not like Abaddon struggles hard with getting levels, 
gets level 6, let's say at the 12 minute mark, finally gets to a fight, activates it. Oh god, it's still bugged, remake, new draft. What? <laughs> I, I'm just hoping it won't be like that. <laughs> no, that, that would be horrible, like we're on a tight schedule here. We can't afford like any crazy re remakes like we had it yesterday. And also the day before, kind, we're kind of unlucky in the last days with, with games being either remade or I don't know, delayed for hours. Like, remember when the patch came out, the Snar game? That was just horrible. Like, waiting three hours for a game two to happen. But then again, I, I wanted to go in just to have the ticket and everything. So, uh, wow. man, I bought the ticket. I have it in my inventory now. Should give it away to somebody. <laughs> I, I got it like for free anyway because I'm casting it. But I bought it as well just for the support for the prize pool. Really? Man, yep. you're a good guy. No, I have to admit, I didn't buy it. Like, I just got it from Siluba. Yeah, I mean, I want to support, although it would be so much more effective for me if I had get the ticket anyway from the lobby to just contact Joined Auto, like, hey, let me transfer you some money. <laughs> that Val won't get a cut from it. But then again, Val doing a great job, so I guess they deserve their share as well. Yeah, no, definitely, they definitely do, like, but, I mean, I bought probably about 100 tickets already, so, at the moment, I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I don't know, I support small so tournaments wherever I can, especially local tournaments here around where I live, like, may they be German, Hungarian, or any Balkan stuff, I always buy the tickets, unless they're super expensive, and, yeah, I mean, everything that's, like, up to 1-2 to euros, it's, it's kind of okay, because, like, I... We get sometimes items here actually from casting just as we would watch the games and like the heroic items you can actually sell them for like I don't know 10 cents or something so if we cast a lot I get a lot of items sell them and then like from that money I pretty much <laughs> buy the ticket. That's how it works. It can't say it hurts. <laughs> don't yeah. really care too much about the items maybe like international items like sell the courier for $37,000 who the <laughs> hell buys that? No, like actually, no, 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 it's, it's really, it's case like this, there's actually a lot of people on the JD, uh, on the JD, what am I saying, on the Valve community market that buy the heroic items um, sorted by teams, so there's a lot of people making the mistake, for example, they get a heroic item by watching a game, then they go to the list, and by the way, yeah, guys, I'm sharing some insight now how to make money with uh, Dota 2, I mean, not a lot of money, I'm talking about a couple cents, maybe a dollar or two uh, over quite some time, but either way, yeah, so they sort it by the item, and then just buy the cheapest one, or they just put it in for the price of the cheapest one, and they, they instantly sell out, but like if you actually have an uh, item, I don't know, with EG versus DK, or even better, Alliance versus Navi, the El Clasico, then yeah, you can actually put that in for like 2, 3 euros or dollars, whatever currency you uh, have there, and yep, yeah, that, that's Yeah man, but seriously, some guy bought a courier for 37,000. I mean, why not? If you got money, I mean, I have no money whatsoever. <laughs> you, why not? I mean, <laughs> give it to charity or something. Do something good with it. Buying a goddamn virtual courier. But I it's mean, charity. it's okay, $100, no, 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 no. maybe, maybe $200, but 37,000, man. I would live off $37,000 for like 10 years. Man. <laughs> well, not maybe 10, 5, 5 easily. Yeah, but it, I mean, if you look at it, it is sort of charity, isn't it? I mean,. The $37,000 goes first of all to the guy who has it, so sure he can do something with it, he probably will spend it into esports as well, he will buy games with it, he will buy software, hardware, whatsoever. Then Valve is also getting the share, Valve getting money means more better stuff, tournaments, TI, etc, etc. So as long as the money stays into esports, I'm absolutely happy with it. Like. I don't like when money gets drained out of esports. People just try to, I don't know, get rich and like try to really get the last cent out of every viewer or every player whatsoever. But as long as the money stays in the esports scene, I'm absolutely fine with everything. And now it seems, yeah, the Mr. Warfling actually reconnected. Now it's just a matter of time till we get finally our unpause here. Well, yeah, it didn't actually take that long. At least it didn't feel that long of a pause. Got some nice <laughs> topics going here. Actually, I was so, so sad that I didn't almost see... Well, I actually didn't see a single game live from the International Free, so didn't even get the chance to get some nice items. 
Oh, here, if you just says, like, see you, yeah, shout out to you. Uh, I earned $5.80 or $85? Oh, no, uh, $58? No, I think $5.8 by selling uh, ugly rares. Yeah, that's that's how you get it. And from those $5, you can afford, like, all those cheap turn. I mean, cheap tournaments, like, smaller tournaments. That translates into, like, four or five tickets. So, yeah, it stays in esports. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, it's and the HUD is actually it's it's a bit changed here and there, but yeah, it's OD HUD because we use it because it has the nice colors of the Hevla TV logo and everything. That's that's why we uh, use it. Now Arise is saying the Vi, the Vi, the Vi, the Vi, the Vi, the Vi. Yeah. The Bustra, Bustra. <laughs> The, I can totally the, do this, the man. I'm gonna go into Russian spam. casting soon. Missing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the game is unpaused, guys. Here we go. Let's see what the laning is. I'm really looking forward, but at the moment, it looks like... I mean, usually Crazy should be in the mid, but is it actually a Mirana mid when there is a Dread here on the Shadow Demon? That would be kind of disappointing, I say. So, and now Yuki? Like, I wanted, I wanted to see him in the mid, but... I don't know, maybe Relax is swapping around. I hope so. And maybe we were right with the laning. Arise, as I said, is in the mid. There we were absolutely right. Leon is going to be here, a solo Batrider. Uh, having kind of a hard job if actually Dread is rotating in with the center Warner. Because there we have the disruption. Uh, Hoofstorm double edge set up with the soul catcher on top of it. That is absolutely deadly for a Batrider. It's pretty much deadly for every support you get there. And Sizu, then Quicks and Freezer here on the Luna. They're gonna play a tri lane, a aggressive tri lane. So let's see. But we were right, by the way. Look at the radiant laning. The only thing we weren't right is that Dread is probably gonna rotate in and out lane lanes. Maybe he's gonna say hello to the mid lane just to help the morph at the early levels, and then he's rotating in from the side, getting crazy those nice setups with the disruption. Yeah, well, it's kind of easy to figure out the laning if you see actually what player picks up the heroes. Because most teams, they're just completely standard. A few teams just can completely turn it around, just send them to different lanes like DK, Movie Fanatic, teams like that, who just have so many mobile players and, of course, players that can play pretty much every single role. Yep. And by the way, the warding here is pretty nice. We're going to see, like, here two camps definitely plugged. Um, yep, this should plug this one as well and a nice aggressive ward so they know when Dread is coming unless he is smoked and yeah creep waves are are hitting each other and now the game officially started let's see how this goes out crazy well he also has to care there is a double damage on the rubik they have telekinesis and enough right clicks the lucid beam to finish oh, off they use the telekinesis as well the arrow actually well he has the arrow himself what am i saying but they went for the right clicks they did do some nice damage and of course mirana not the tankiest of heroes anyway, but only one lockdown, it's just not enough. Although, if they go again soon with the leap on cooldown, they might be able to get the kill like that. Yep, the biggest problem is he only has shared tangos. That means once this tango is through, he only got the self left, and this is kind of dangerous for him. Not enough region, there is uh, the cooldown on the shared. Oh, mid lane, Yogi actually taking so much damage, was only one right click short of the death there. Yep, that's the danger of uh, running a morphling mid. Chen here. I guess he's gonna rotate soon. Maybe there's even a tornado harass. Oh, wait for one to arise. He gets the face shift out, but the right click will do the job. <laughs> Yoki turns wow. it around and gets the first blood himself. But bottom lane arrow onto quicks. A few more right clicks would have been enough, but Tay My White doesn't want to go in because the leap is on cooldown. Man, so much action around the 130 mark here. That's that's pretty much crazy. Dread, as, yep, yeah, I didn't expect it, but he is the one who's staying definitely now with. The center Rona, hoping to get something, but now Sizu here is super aggressive against Mirana. Well, did do some decent enough damage, the 40 shield blow, or whatever, explosion, how you call explosion. it. <laughs> it did some nice damage, but Mirana now going aggressive onto Quicks, Rubik does man fight it a little bit, Freezer coming in with the Lucian Beam, just to help out his support a little bit, but Mirana is level 3, but the Creepy of course now is pushing towards the side of the Dire. So Mirana will be hard pressed to find some XP if the supports do a nice shot. But then again, Invis Windex coming in on the chain has the test of faith for maybe a lucky roll. It's well 50 to 100 damage, so it's not that high anyway. Yeah, you can't really roll that high. But yeah, here the Hellbear Smasher is coming in, getting the thunderclap off. Yeah, actually hits freezer. Look at the damage. 
Yeah, but oh, there's oh, bad rider. Just dodging the hoof storm coming out. Charlotte couldn't get in range. Oh, the double edge comes out and Leon. Yep, doing a lot of damage tower. while you have like soul catcher on you. You should definitely not be in range. And yep, this looked so far away, but Shaflo actually got that hit off. Yeah, it's definitely unlucky for him that he didn't actually land the hoof storm. I'm not too sure if he didn't get in range before the disruption ended or what, or maybe just couldn't time it correctly. Yeah, I guess it was a timing problem. I didn't see it either. But yep, either way, relax. Like with the first blood here, like TCN got the first blood in the first game and they lost it. So if that's now an omen, then it's the other way around. He arrives in the mid, getting a lot of harass damage. Like again, he couldn't dodge that waveform, so getting the entire damage plus four or five right clicks in his face. So yeah. Actually, might go down. There's another waveform coming out. The rise uses the illusion of nice phase shift out, and actually chants as well at the same time. So Yoki now. He has his bottle, so he's going to be fine, although he's dropping one pretty low himself. Yep, and they finally got the kill dead. on yeah. the Mirana. Yeah, there was Telekinesis, Lucent Beam, and hits, I think, even a Photic Shield or a, a Miscoy from the Abaddon. And, okay, they get the kill. This one I actually missed now. Batrider dying to the Shadow Demon and uh, Santa Warner combination. So a lot of action going on here on each and every lane. Just a fall from back. It's 2-1 now for Relax. So... Yep, they already starting getting advantage. Now we have to see what the rotations do, but it just feels that Relax, as I said, so much more. Oh my god, that arrow on Ciso! Oh, he might go down. He stun. has the Aphotic Shield, maybe. Can he get it up? He does get it up as well, so crazy now. Quick's coming in to help, but Ciso, he will fall down. Windex rotates in, and Quick's now. Arrow will be cooling off <laughs> soon. It's level 2, but no. Yeah, but they don't pursue. I think they could have pursued this. I mean, Mirana had leaped there, Brown Boots. With the arrow hit and the Chen behind it, that might have worked. And oh, now they yeah, kill they off Batrider again. Yeah. Ciso actually was just coming in, but not quite in time. So Shadow Demon Centaur, that burst damage is too much for Leon to handle at the moment. The Soul Catcher just does so much extra damage there. And the Rise Middling dropping quite low as well. Yoki really aggressive on the Morphling, and it's paying off. Last hit twice though. It's really even a rise 23 and 6 compared to Yoki's 22 and 8. Yep, so it's just a problem that like a rise, like he has to wait for his bottle and like he has to be so fast on that phase shift, otherwise it's just not working out. If he gets that wave uh, damage. Oh, Telekinesis onto Mirana, there's the fate bolt, the right clicks. Oh, he just barely gets the leap out. The arrow will be there as well. Freezer doesn't get hit, but he's taking a lot of harass anyway. With the right clicks, we index. Will he actually be able to finish it up? Does not look like it. Oh, Freezer. Yep. Just by the skin of his teeth escaping there. Yeah, he has a solve, so he's actually getting like out of here and staying on the lane while crazy. He has to actually go back. So as I said, in this lanes, the funny part about this draft that on both sides he could just go and explode anytime. It's so hard to catch those kills. They're so fast. Like this dual lane top is such a deadly combination. Here in mid we saw it arise. And also, like here in the bottom line, when an arrow connects, like that's an easy kill. Batrider now, he gave up on his lane. Sisu is just grabbing some XP, everything he can, of course. And yep, Batrider starting to get in the jungle. Gold wise, well, just 500 gold a bottle on top of it. And now here, Troll Summoner in the mid, they want to get a rise. Waveform, the Troll Summoner with the Ensnare, that would actually be enough. Dread would also be somewhere around. And there it is. He's coming in with the wraparound, there's the disruption there, but actually the follow-up from the waveform isn't there, but the right clicks who actually might be enough, but gets one face if the right clicks flying in, he got the bottle from the courier, so oh, the shadow poison, if he had ticked it before, maybe, oh, dream coil onto dread, he's on the run, going for the TP out, will he be able to, no, there's the telekinesis by Kirk's waveform, gets the kill onto a rise, dread will fall in the end to the mist coil, but Yoki, is he actually going for more, has the in his rune though, so, he's completely safe. Yep, That's was... not a worthwhile trade. And I think he wants to go more, yeah. He, he yeah, wants to go quick. The right is coming in. Even reacting. Oh my god, Yoki. That magnificent bastard. He's just playing so well for the second game in a row. Yeah, and uh, this really looked like that Rubik wasn't expecting him there at all. I think he didn't even have him on the screen. He's just coming from the back, getting the right clicks in, then the wave form. An easy kill there. 6 2 now for Relax. It's looking so good for those guys. The mid. I don't know, like, I mean, the Dreamcoin and everything, that was super nice, but 
like for the cost of you dying just getting a support with the first dream call you cast in the game i don't know that was not like the trade you really want to do the only good thing is batrider in the meantime is finding at least some farm he needs that blink dagger asap they need that lasso lockdown especially for the morphling hopefully getting him while he is more into agility and yep freezer it's pretty much all down to freezer he gets the farm but like out carrying a morph a morph that has such a good start more levels more farm oh there's the stampede coming out they're going on there's the eclipse of dread actually all oh, the chain creeps just soak up so much of that arrow gets towards the purchase there on freezer though nowhere to run test of faith as well he's trying to turn it around goes in with the loosen pimp they actually managed to bring down windex but there's the hoof storm coming in only catches one as well the double edge he's dropping so low missed coil gets the kill so two for one for the time being there's the dream coil on crazy as well Silenced up, but the Moonlight Shadow is there, so they should be safe. And Zizou, Burrow time activated. It won't last for too long. There's the waveform. Yoki gets the kill. Yep, even the arrow would have hit, but Arise oh, Arise, is still don't around. go in, man! The Illusion Arrow boys use. He has to go to the tower now. Wants to maybe get crazy, but no spells for him. No Blink Dagger either. Don't think he can chase him down. The Illusion Arrow is coming, but it's such a slow spell animation. It's still chasing Mirana. Mirana has to dodge. There's the silence, but the leap came out before. So Arise, where are you this running, man? Arise. Oh, this is oh, a disaster. I yeah. rolled up onto the tower, Soul Catcher. No, this is this is not how you should do it, Arise. So greedy. So greedy on that Mirana. But to be honest, I think that wasn't even greed. Like, that was just like, oh, damn it. Like here, Dread and the Morphling is somewhere around here. I should just, yeah, I should just go and try because I will die either way if I go back. There was also no TP for him, so he couldn't orb somewhere in the trees and then just TP out. And even if, like, if the Morphling just waveforms in, gives the vision to Dread, he would have had the disruption. So either way, it's 9 4. Like, it started with a nice turnaround for TCN, but in the end, Relax just being. Yeah, better in the fighting and also like the greed or whatever it was from Arise. Like oh, now here in the mid, he's getting so much damage again here. The morphing is just so damn farm. There's the waveform coming out. Fifty, uh, no, no adaptive nope. strike, just a right click. Yeah, oh it's just not working out for Arise at the morphling. moment. Yoki, I mean, he totally won them the first game, but top lane, oh, Shallow, he has the blink dagger and gets the blink out as well. Yep, definitely. That early farm, that early dagger, now it comes to turn around. Yeah, there's the demonic purge onto Freezer, no eclipse for him, a Koti kill is there, but slow is still active, and oh, they're going in with the stampede, but Leon is there, has the lasso as well, flame break, actually saving them a little bit. Arrow close, point blank, quite crazy as well, and Shallow now, can he blink out once again, going towards the same route, but Dread now, oh, Yoki coming in. I have to be careful though, he's the only one alive for the timing, but the blink, hoof stomp maybe. Leon has the aphotic shield and they're just packing up. Yeah, pretty much a standoff, like every initiation on both sides failed here, so it didn't turn out to be, yeah, I don't know, a preferable fight for either team. Now they team back, back to the lanes and Chen here with two wild wing rippers on quicks. Quicks, oh Rubik, run! Nowhere to run, the right clicks are coming in, the arrow actually will come in as well, Arise will get the dodge and Rubik still alive. The <laughs> Moonlight Shadows won't help because the dust of appearance is there. They get Chen, will they get more though? Actually though they don't have vision of the others. But now the Moonlight Shadows comes off, Shallow has the Blink Dagger if need be. They do, don't have the Dream Call and the Rise taking so much damage, the waveform coming out as well. The Aphotic Shield keeping him alive but nowhere to run the double edge. Actually just the Hoof Stomp, it yep. will get the The Hoof Stomp was early enough, no double edge needed and yeah. With level 1 phase shift, like, of course you can try to dodge anything but like even if you dodge the waveform, then it's still Morph is standing right next to you. There is a Center War now waiting with the Dagger just to come in. So, yeah, 11-5 for TCN. To be honest, I think they should just settle with less at the moment. Like, they turned around the gank attempt on the Chen, so why not just stopping there? Why not just, you know, having this as, like, some nice bolster going back to farm? But they want more, and they always pair it dearly. Every time they overextend, they just, yeah. Oh, and there's here for the mid. They want to go mid, freezer. There's the hoof stomp coming out, double edge, oh. he's still alive, but they will finish it's the job, enough. or will they freeze her? He's so fast, he's on the run, there's the eclipse. Oh, that was a waste, to be honest. Yeah, but oh my god, both of them, like Shachlo and Yoki, already going back, expecting that Luna to be dead, and then suddenly he is still alive, that was pretty much hilarious, and I think he might have been better by just running straight, but yep, didn't happen, the tier 1 tower might actually, yep, 
there won't be any rotation whatsoever. It goes down. Nobody's getting the last hit though. And the tier 1 tower here bottom is also very low. We see the rotations coming in. There's Zizu followed by Quicks and of course Arise is already there in position all the time. But no Blink Dagger on him. But there's the Dream Core. Oh, what's crazy? He just leaves into the jungle. Disruption safely as well. Arise goes for the silence and now sees how Demonic first up. He might get the escape, but Crazy actually drops over. There's the hand of God. Star Storm as well. Rubik dropping so damn low. The Fate Bolt, the test of Fate that got stolen. They're, they're turning it around. Rubik goes down, but Dread now. Man fighting Arise. I don't know who can actually win. Looks like Puck taking the worst end of it. There's another silence, but Shallow is there on the center and the right clicks by the two of them. Yep, we'll the entire relaxed team arrived here. So in the end, this was free down for a Mirana kill. And yeah, Batrider, he had the Blink Dagger now, but yeah, we didn't even see a lasso yet. It's almost 14 minutes into the game. Like, there, there should not be any crazy action right now. So showing the crafts, 4,000 and climbing, 4 relax. Gold wise, 3,000 and climbing, almost 4,000. So yeah, relax definitely. Of course, look at the kill board, 15-6. Absolutely having the advantage here. Now let's see if they can put up a defense or if this is a second tier one tower. Losing all these towers so early. Oh, yes, oh, this is so up onto Dread. A nice target as well. He had the demonic perch up. It's still alive. Moonlight shadows. It won't be enough, nor will be the sent back. They want to chase for more though. Hey, loser rope comes out. The silence as well. Windex gets hit. Of course, Moonlight Shadows. No vision. Arrow actually will land on the rise. It might be huge. There's the dust of appears, but a nice two man hoof stomp double edge on top. Shallow gets the kill. Stampede are slowing everybody down just before they make their escape. Crazy going in with the right clicks. They might do enough. Zizo, a little over Celeste. Yoki from the back. Oh my god, the Morphling coming in. He will get the kill on Freezer. Really, a few more right clicks. He has the double damage as well. Leon getting stunned up. Double edge as well. Yo, getting the double kill. Triple Gets the third as well. kill. Morphling 8, 0, and 3. Quicks actually did come from the sidelines. He used the waveform he stole before. Get, got the kill on Sholo, actually Windex has to be careful as well, the waveform about to cool down, there's the telekinesis, fade bolt, waveform, not even necessarily the right clicks, oh the disruption, he has enough mana for the waveform, gets the kill, but he's gonna pay dearly, the money first up, nowhere to run anymore. Yep, definitely, he goes down there and that makes it a godlike streak for Yoki, like his double damage is just about running out, like this was also the perfect timing for having a double damage, like engaging in that fight, going into a fight where everybody's low, like the, all the cooldowns are down already, this morph is gonna get so super farmed, PTs are up, ultimate orb, the Aquila already, of course the magic one with 15 charges and now Arise, yeah, oh he God, gets Arise. disrupted up, so catcher actually is there as well and Arise, Easy pick off. Shalo comes in with the double edge to grab the kill. Actually, the whole Lincolns is already finished on Yoki. Yep, definitely. And wow, Hood of Defiance on Shalo as well. So he's gonna get. The oh, Hoof stop onto Sizo. The Photic Shield was there. Double edge as well. Now the Soul Catcher hits, but all the spells were used. But the Purge is there. Borrow time ends. And Dread grabs himself the kill. They're just playing on another level at the moment. Yep, relax. Like, I have to say it, like, I like the TCN guys so much, but at the moment, relax is just really on another page than TCN. Like, drafting-wise, okay, I already had a couple questions in here. Freezer, Yoki versus Freezer. Oh, he actually long. lands the arrow to Shallow. Nice. And and Rice wants to go in. Hand of God comes out. Center gets the hoof stomp though. Double H as well. Oh, counter kill. Succeeded. Yep, and he, Yoki's still going in the top lane. Oh, he has like three stacks of stick in Apon, but the Stampede saves him from trouble. Actually, he might want to turn it around. Yeah, he could go on Freezer if he gets the waveform throw, but then again, I don't think he wants to throw away his life because he's on a godlike streak. If he can, feeding the way that streak plus the XP, of course, come on with it, that would not be favorable. But yeah, as I said, I was in the top lane with the camera and in the bottom lane, the puck went down. Oh, oh nice telekinesis by Quicksmith and just the shallow. Deep it in and now Arrow onto Crazy as well. Ciso is the only one there though. Hoof stomp stopping Abaddon for some extra damage. Now there's the Aphotic Shield. Chen coming in from the side of Windex. There's the Troll Trap and Ciso Burrow time activates once again. Has to back off for the time being. <laughs> Triple, uh, double tornado and then snare. Like, he don't want to stand in this. But that was just some lightning fast reaction by Quicks. Just as the center blinked next to the Rubik. Immediate telekinesis. I think he actually wanted to telekinesis maybe before the blink even. That's the only reason I can maybe think of. 
You know what's the funny part is when it was about the draft, I was saying like, oh my god, it's so dangerous, like a Shadow Fiend sent Mirana combination, but in the end, it turns out that the that Yoki on the Morphling, while winning his mid, has so much influence on this game, so much impact. But yep, they want to go for that tier 2 tower. This is the center, but that's just the telekinesis waiting, and the rise might be trouble. Leon goes in with the last, so catch is crazy, but he gets moved on to get great at least. The stampede coming out, though. Will there be the counter? Is the money purchase there? But oh, the stampede got stolen. What a steal by Rubik. Four oh. man, coil as well. But it's still not enough because they just shrugged it off. They waited out. There's nowhere to run for them. Oh, a rise, double edge, move down. There's the disruption out as well. They might get a few more CISO in huge trouble. He has the barrel time. If need be, it's still not activated. They're going ag aggressive. CISO. Can he go in a rise? Barely gets the escape, but yeah, that just strike. He gets the kill and Yoki. He's just too much of a powerhouse on the morphing at the moment. And Zizo Burrow time already off cooldown and double edge. No actually dread hitting the kill with the shadow poison. Yep, definitely. And now Relax is already diving. Tier 3 already getting some hit off the tier 4. And there's nothing at the moment TCN can do. Uh, Freezer is still farming on the Luna. I think they already gave up on those mid raxes. There's no point in defending. There is, as I said, there's still Hand of God would be there in 10 seconds. The mech is healing up all the creeps, even though. Uh, Batrider is now putting out the creeps. It's nothing they can do. These Raxes are down. Cliff now being used, okay, but still for what? It, it's just, yeah, it's just stalling a bit of time. That's that's pretty much it. You relax. They just have so much more gold to work with. Yeah, they have to hoof stomp onto Ciso immediately. No barrel time. Five seconds on cooldown. He just TP to certain death. Now crazy telekinesis is actually pretty nicely done by Quicks. There's the stampede. Oh god, they actually kill off Yoki. There's the Eclipse coming out as well. Crazy drop slow. As does Windex. They actually kill off Crazy. Now chasing Thread. The Stampede ends. So actually might go down. Shachlo gets a kill on to Rise on the puck in the meantime. But Leon chasing Shadow Demon. He <laughs> smells blood. And there's the last soul coming out. The right clicks by Freezer. It will be enough as well. Yep. I mean, after all, I mean, Freezer here with the invisibility. Oh, oh he wants to nice disruption by the Rubik himself. There's the Telekinesis now, Shachlo. They're actually throwing away a couple of kills here. It won't make maybe too much of a difference and hoof stomp stolen by Quicks. Yep, definitely. Quicks, like a really nice Rubik player, I have to say. Like the timing and the, the steals he made in, in the last 3-4 minutes, absolutely worth it. So in the end, uh, Relax losing. Four heroes here. Like even the Yoki uh, got like... I don't know who actually got the money, but like this is definitely a nice fight for TCN. But the problem is the game till now was already horrible for TCN. They lost the mid racks and yeah, I don't know. We had these little oh freezer. Yeah, Yoki mid. going in so aggressive. Although freezer should have the advantage. Nope, the adaptive strike. So where was the aphotic shield? The support just wasn't there in time and crazy now might want to go for the return season so takes so much damage. He has the barrel time, has the TP as well. There's the leap arise, nice dodge with the patient. Quicks coming in, hoof stop onto two with the dream cone on top. The disrupt disruption comes out by threat. But Leon is there with the flame break. They might catch Yoki again. He gets the wave from out. Can he escape though? Leon gets the slow. Oh, the stampede should be enough. Yep, but so still? in the end, the two for uh, one for one here. That, that was really a surprise. I thought these were going down. Anyway, now fast taking the opportunity to show the crafts. We have, well, they had almost 12k experience lead now, relax. After this fight in the mid, I mean, dropping by almost 4k here is worth it for the racks, if you ask me. Gold wise, well, they almost were at 10k now, dropping uh, closer to the 7.5 mark, but nevertheless. Relax has absolutely the upper hand here in this fight, but we saw it in the last fight. I mean, circumstances were nice for TCN, I have to admit it, but also the fights, especially like uh, Quicks here on his Rubik, absolutely nice, nicely, beautifully done, actually. And yep, let's see how this goes. They need at least two more such fights to... I don't know. <laughs> oh, they scout really. out Quicks, though. It's only Windex, so he doesn't have any slows or stuns on the chain, of course. Oh, Quicks goes aggressive. There's the Telekinesis. He wants to put him on the high ground. Telekinesis low range. Just falling off a little short, but Dread coming in now. Will he oh, go for the error. disruption? Zizo has to be extremely <laughs> careful. There's the adaptive strike. Ring around the rosy. They're going in now. The Purge is about to come out. No Dread. Just some minor hash. I don't understand why Relax didn't go on it, to be honest. No, because like if you, if you put Demonic Purge first up, then he's just using his burr time. 
and he's out of there, so you have to actually use... Yeah, but I mean, he could yep. have started it on the Rubik immediately, I think, no? Yeah, I guess on the Rubik that would have been... No, but I mean, on, on the Abaddon, you have to get him low, bird time, and as soon as the bird time uh, is up, then you go for the, the demonic purge. But either way, Relax doesn't really care, everything is just uh, intermezzo for the yeah, inevitable fight here that's gonna happen at the tier 2 tower, or maybe even at the tier 3... Oh, there's a flame break and the arrow coming out <laughs> at the same time. Nice. That arrow was supposed to be concealed by the flame break. Yeah, that was actually nice. Like hiding your arrow in the flame break. That's but next level place to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which the team if fights it's, were I, next level. Yeah. It, it definitely looked like the fly speed for both projectiles was exactly the same, pretty much. Yeah, so it can but be either nothing. way, TCN is deciding here. Oh, Leon goes awesome. in with the lasso, but they target the tankiest person and pipe of inside is active as well the eclipse coming out but pipe gets activated shot is still alive there's the disruption as well see can he do anything dream point catches only one such might actually take a fall on the center but not before the double edge he will fall down for freezers right click luna has his pkb activated but finally they have to back off it's only one for one the center for the puck but windex slowed down by the sticky napalm doesn't look like this gen want to follow onto the high ground. So at the moment, one one relax can't break the high ground, but now he in the mid, the creeps are already pushing in. That means also backdoor protection on the tier three tower is down. Chen doesn't have too many creeps, that's the problem. He's checking the camps. You already picked up a troll summoner. Some skeletons coming as well. But yeah, TCN Arise has a very low respawn timer. It, also his build, I don't know, like level one day gun, power fight Oh, there's a shotgun on the freezer. Ouch. This is of course really unfortunate because that opens now actually a window for Relax to go into that high ground. Luna, we have to check. No, no buyback. 700 gold short of a buyback. That means, yep, they could go for it if they wanted to. By the way, this sentry here is sitting next to this observer waiting all the time to get dewarded, but it's not happening because they just don't get in range. So unfortunate. Oh, see, so almost got arrowed and the creeper was there, but. They're going in, there's the shotgun, the barrel time already activated. He is gonna be fine. Oh no, oh. there's the purge coming out. Oh, he's still four stepped out by Quicks, double four step Leon uses his as well. So making everything that they can to keep Ciso alive. But actually, you know what? Oh, it's just brought out with the courier. Again, him steps, they're on Dread, Shadow Demon. But we won't see it in action, yeah. I think. The Rex, if this Rex falls, I think TCN is gonna call GG. But they do have the lasso up, Eclipse, still 40 seconds on cooldown now. That's just such a high source of damage for them. Yep, absolutely. And now, let's see how this goes. I mean, the tier 3 is down, like, they will slow siege, will they not? I mean, at the moment, TCN, they're back. Oh, the on goes, he catches Windex, but immediate disruption coming up. Stampede as well, hoofed up onto 2 by Sasha, slowing up, Twigs on the Rubik. Sizo, he's alive, but the burrow time, it's on cooldown for the time being, a rise, barely making the escape, finally goes down to Windex. With the test of faith and Cizano trying to tank things up in the front lines. Is it enough? Telekinesis is on to charge as well. Freezer with the right clicks. They get one kill. They're chasing for more action. They're pretty low. Slowed down by the dust of appearance. And oh, crazy. Doesn't get the send back. And Dread now trying to man fight. The clips finally comes out by Freezer. They clean up free Yoki now on the run as well. Looks like he will be safe for the time being. But a 3 for 2 by the looks of oh it. My God. Oh, it's a nice 4 step. But the shotgun is there just in the nick of time. Yep. Greedy though, and now Quicks trying what to man fight. What are you You don't want to fight the morphing right king. Quicks <laughs> coming in by Yoki. The waveform. Oh, nice four step by Quicks, but their last right click was already flying. Yeah, Yoki there, like patient enough. Like he didn't go back, and it was a good decision. He gets a clean up there. It looked pretty good for uh, TCN there. They've driven out Relax out of the base. But yeah, Yoki, that's the problem. He's so super farmed. I mean, 26 minutes, he won his lane. He is level 20. Jesus Christ. There is the Lincolns, the BTs, the Eternal Plate, of course, on top level of it. And yeah, we have a <laughs> GG call. Arise. Six minutes in level 20. That's just so sick. Well, yeah. To be honest, like drafting wise and everything, I thought TCN uh, can have the games, both of them. But then again, the draft here in the in the second game was I don't know, kind of questionable, and also the team fights. I know, and everybody saw it. Every viewer and all the casters, players, whatsoever, you saw it. TCN has the potential to take those fights and everything. It's just those small mistakes, sometimes by a single player, sometimes by uh, decisions as a team, that actually cost them the win. So there is a lot of potential in the TCN guys, but against Relax here, they were just 
much better discipline in the fights, much better pickoffs, map control, etc. And in the end, yeah, Relax taking the win based on this, yeah, advantages over TCN. So, anyway, it's a 2 0 for Relax, and that's it here on HTV1. As I said, guys, um, on Hefla TV2, you're gonna see the North American teams' uh, games of the joint Dota League. I'm gonna swap now to Hefla TV4 and cast the JD finals in German for all the Germans that might be here on the channel. And yeah, I wish you a pleasant evening and see you soon. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, follow us there, of course, for the news. And even better, like Hefla TV1 and 2 are the English channels. Just follow them and you will always get then your nice email when we go online for the games, whatsoever. Next week, we're on the Comic Con the weekend, so all the Romanian guys out there, shout out to you. We're gonna see you hopefully in the stadium there in Bucharest. This is gonna be a lot of fun. And that's it. Over and out, I would say. Just a bit music and ads, and then we're 